There are a lot of options when it comes to landscaping your front yard. Things that will impact the environment and things that will impact your wallet. It's safe to say everybody wants an attractive front yard, but a lot of people are thinking about the alternatives to the traditional front lawn. Paul and Marissa are getting a more naturalized landscape with planted areas, rain gardens, a permeable driveway, and even a rain barrel. A naturalized landscape still includes having a lot of your traditional lawn, but you really want to include plants native to your region. And there are a number of benefits to including those plants. One, we have to cut our grass a lot less, which really decreases the amount of emissions into the atmosphere. Two, a lot less water. And three, a lot less maintenance, which means more time for you on your Saturday afternoon. The man in charge of putting this all into action is Kevin Colbert. Let's go talk to him. Hey, Kevin, good to see you. You too. Good to see you again. So tell us a little bit, it looks like we've done a lot of work here. Tell us a little bit about what, we've, uh, what you've been up to. Uh, well, where we are at now is uh, we've excavated the front yard, and in order to divert the water from the storm sewers, we've hooked up a weeping system onto the existing eavesdrop. Right, so the idea, I guess, is to divert that water that usually enters the storm sewer onto the property itself. Exactly. The soft part is perforated, so uh, it's a very slight grade, so as the water moves through, it slowly drains into the soil. So this will be the equivalent of a, a watering system for the yard once we plant our plants. Exactly. Great. Now, would you consider this more as a DIY type of project, something you could do over the weekend? If you wanted to knock this off on a weekend, what you could work on is just the trench itself as opposed to the whole yard. Right. And create this new route for the water and then put in new soil and resod it. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Perfect. Okay, we're here in the backyard to install Paula Marissa's brand new rain barrel, which they'll use to water all of their plants. Now, we selected our location, which is right adjacent to this roof downspout. Now, there's three things that you want to take into consideration when installing your rain barrel. Number one is slope. You want to choose a location that has the slope away from the foundation of your home. Number two is your base. You want to make sure that you've had a nice, sturdy base installed, which we've done already, which is nice and level. When your rain barrel is sitting on your base, you want that to lie level and not tilt when it's full of water. And the third thing to take into consideration is the overflow. Make sure that your overflow extends at least two meters away from the foundation of your home. In this case, we'll probably be directing it this way. All right? We'll stick our rain barrel on, and let's get started. Okay, so we've completed the install of our brand new rain barrel. As you can see, we've elevated our rain barrel. Now this makes it a lot easier when filling up your watering can. Now there's a number of benefits to installing your own rain barrel. First, all of that water that we're using ends up here and not down in our local rivers and streams. Now, that's a good thing. The second thing is plants actually prefer rainwater instead of our chlorinated tap water. Now cost. This rain barrel was $50 from our local regional municipality. Our diverter kit was $25 purchased at our local garden center. 